Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, talented, beautiful co-host and producer, Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's up, Sean? How are you today? You know, you're pretty beautiful yourself. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be that. Thank you. And awesome and talented all at the same oh, time. Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get some compliments. I had to thank throw something back your way. You got I me feeling it. wonderful. Awesome. So how are you today? I am boomalicious. Bo- uh oh, what is this? <laughs> so I don't know what it means, but it, I love how it feels to say it. That reminds Boom, me. Malicious. That man, my, reminds me of Shaggy. There we go. Right. Right. Lover, lover. <laughs> That's right. Tell it wasn't you. <gasps> yes. Uh, another guy that crushing it from... with um, uh, reggae music. Oh without yeah. Without an actual reggae accent himself. Yeah. In speaking right. Voice. Just you lay it over the right it track. Happens. You can do it whatever happens. you like. That came from Jason Lagarde of Mindset Mountain. Awesome. Yes. yes my of whom man. we you have already been on their show. Yeah. And I'll be joining them shortly. And awesome. he just dropped it on me. I said I was going to use that one. Yeah, fantastic it's just energy. Fun to say. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show yeah. today. We've got an amazing show lined up for you. We're going to be talking about four unusual foods that can help to transform your body, Mm-mm. and it's going to be a good time. Good <laughs> stuff. So get ready, take some notes, listen in. Lots and lots of of benefit, things that are going to be able to add a lot of value to your life for many years to come. But first, let's give a shout out to our show sponsor, onit.com. Head over to (laughs) onnit.com forward slash model for 10% off all of your health and human performance supplements. Actually, today I've got the Alpha Brain here in my water. Uh, It's their flagship product. We're going to talk more about this on a future episode. And what's so unique about On It is that they actually funded their own clinical trials for this flagship product. Hardly ever will you hear something like that with Mm -hmm. a supplement company Mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of regulation in what people can say about their supplements. And On It really stands behind their their supplements. Their brand is amazing. The people there have so much integrity. I love those guys. Alpha Brain, the Hemp Force Protein. The Shroom Tech has been my friend as I've been traveling. It has so head over there, check them out, onit.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now let's get into the iTunes view of the week. All right, this one is another five-star rating from TCNU. <laughs> Addicted to learning. I recently began listening and I can't stop. I'm in the medical field and I also teach anatomy and physiology. Sean shares relevant research that I do not have time to gather myself. Every podcast, I learn something new. Love <laughs> it. That's what it's really all about is, and one of the big reasons I do what I, I'm doing is to influence influencers, you know, people that can help people that I would never reach on my own and who have the impact and the power to touch thousands upon thousands of lives because that's the only way we're going to make a yeah. real sustainable change in the dynamic of our of our world mm-hmm. and our society right now. So thank you so much for leaving that review. Thank you, everybody, for heading over to iTunes, leaving those reviews for us. Appreciate it beyond words. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and get into our topic of the day. Today we're going to be talking about four unusual foods that can help to transform your body. And we're going to take it even a step further. We're going to talk about four specific categories or classes of foods, and we're going to dive into different pieces of those. So The very first one, and I really want people to pay attention to this and take advantage of this because this is one of the only true wild foods that a lot of us have access to today. And this category of foods that can help to transform your health and your body is seaweeds. (laughs) All right. So it's a little unusual. I know definitely when I first heard about it, like, so you're going to eat this? What? Mm -hmm. You know, but in actuality, Mm -hmm. these sea veggies, it's a much softer name and more attractive name, the sea veggies have some compounds and some nutrients that you just won't find anywhere else. And again, these are truly wild foods. And today we don't get a lot of access to foods that have that kind of uh, ancient strain of information, Mm -hmm. you know? And so some of my favorites, number one is dulse, or we sometimes call it dulce. (laughs) Dulce and compound. No, so dulce is (laughs) D-U-L-S-E. And this is a very... A uh, viable source of iodine, which helps to uh, regulate your thyroid function and your metabolism. Iodine is critically important today. The reason that we started to uh, add iodine to conventional salt many years ago was to help prevent people from having this deficiency, which would lead to these things called goiters, mm. which are these big kind of uh, masses uh, in your throat. 
mm-hmm. which is where your thyroid is located, this amazing butterfly-shaped gland. And we've talked about this on past shows, like uh, specifically with Dr. Jillian Tita, mm-hmm. uh, which we'll put that in the show notes. A powerhouse episode. It is a must to help you to understand what's going on with your thyroid at the quantum level. Right. It's just phenomenal. Everybody needs mm-hmm. to, to hear that show. So iodine is one of the big components here. And there was a study published in Food and Chemical Toxicology that showed that dulse is an excellent antioxidant and proven free radical scavenger, all right? Mm -hmm. So helping to protect your body against the free radical activity that so many of us are concerned about because what that is essentially is aging, all right? So this is the kind of rusting of your minerals that make up your body. Mm -hmm. Now, also what's important about dulse and valuable is that it might just possibly be the highest source of potassium gram for gram of any food, which is critical for muscle function and also, as you guys know, uh, in Sleep Smarter for regulating your sleep. And there was a study published in the journal Sleep that found that potassium may be effective for people who have trouble staying asleep after sleep onset. And of course, that's again, it's featured in Sleep Smarter in chapter seven, fix your gut to fix your sleep. (laughs) So, so many wonderful benefits there with dulse, But in this category, and so where you would find this, you know, you go to your local health food (laughs) store, you can order it online, Mm -hmm. and you can get it in like little flakes that you can sprinkle on top of different foods, or they've got like the whole seaweed is dried, and you just kind of tear off pieces, maybe like think of it like some jerky or something. Mm -hmm. I actually think dulse tastes pretty pleasant with certain foods. I was going to ask, what does it taste like? So it tastes just a little bit salty, you know, because it's from the sea, Sure. you know, but uh, we like to sprinkle it on top of solids. I think it's really great there. Um greens you know when you make some sauteed greens put a little dulse mm, on top of that that sounds good it's fantastic instead of salt then what if you have salt with iodine in it or we don't want to mess with that so let's thank you for bringing that back up because you know the the girl with the umbrella right right that's not it that's we don't want to mess with that salt <laughs> just sprinkle you know? it on your so sidewalk that's, and it's needed. treated with some pretty harsh chemicals as well to okay. and it eliminates most of the things that would be found in salt you know so um sea salt has you know, over 80 minerals. And that kind of uh, conventional processed table salt has just a couple, okay. you know, because it's been processed out mm-hmm. and also been bleached as well. So it's not so the best thing. So sea salt is okay. Yeah, now definitely. then does sea salt complement those or I mean, can they be either or? Yeah, uh, but it's not salt. Let's be honest. Salt tastes good, you know. And so also animals are, are driven to salt, you know, in nature, you know, you put the salt lick out for the cows, they're heading over to it, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I'm not going to say it can replace that good okay. flavor that you can get, but just, you could find a nice balance and, and back up on the mm-hmm. salt, you know, because for some people it can lead to some issues with their blood pressure, of course, but you're going to fa- have far less issues with blood pressure if you're using, you know, Himalayan salt or um, the Celtic salt, mm-hmm. things like that versus the processed, Um, conventional table salt that are in a lot of processed Mm -hmm. foods. But I mean, with the added benefit of the iodine for my thyroid and the antioxidant, right? you know, it's worth adding it in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, so that's just one of the sea veggies you absolutely, that might be unusual, but you need to start adding these in on a regular basis. Another one is kelp. (sighs) Kelp. And it's become pretty popular now. And you you know, we've been talking about this for about 10 years, you know, well, but I want to already ahead of the game. <laughs> I want to drive this point home because mm-hmm. these are simple things, and now you don't have to just get this kind of weird looking sea veggie that's dry. You can get little <laughs> shakers. They're they're kelp little shakers you can sprinkle on top of your food. So, kelp is actually the highest source of iodine of any known food. It has hundreds of micronutrients, and it's also a great source of chlorophyll. And you'll notice that the dulse is a little bit more red tint, and the kelp is a little bit more green, bluish green. Mm-hmm. And chlorophyll is an excellent, extremely important biomolecule, and it's critical to the photosynthesis process that allows plants to absorb energy from light, all right, and convert that into nutrition. Such a powerful process that all of this stuff is imbued in, and you get that by consuming these plants with this kind of power. So chlorophyll is an effective antioxidant and appetite regulator. There was a study conducted at the Department of Experimental medical science at Lund University in Sweden that found that chlorophyll helps to reduce hunger and stabilize blood sugar levels. All right, so this is another good reason to get in viable sources like kelp. Mm -hmm. Then there's so many others that we could talk about. There's wakame, arame, sea palm, nori. A lot of people know about nori, but they don't know about nori because this is what 
sushi is -hmm. wrapped up in and then the little rice on the outside, Mm -hmm. but that's nori paper or nori sheets, Mm -hmm. which they're also, of course, they're going to be rich in iodine. They're also rich in calcium, magnesium, iron, vitamin C is there, as well as the other ones we talked about, B vitamins. And how do you add these things in? Again, just sprinkle it on top of your food. It's really that Mm -hmm. simple. Um, The uh, nori rolls are tasty for kids when you put them in the oven, roast them. Mm, You put uh, a Put it, brush some water on one sheet, mm-hmm. attach another, mm-hmm. and then cut them into strips and put them in the oven on mm-hmm. low, and then they come out nice and crispy like, like chips. Nori chips. Nori chips. Look at you. Make them ahead. Hey, See, I'm learning ideas. to make it happen <laughs> for the family. But I do have some questions about sea veggies then, because we often refer to being aware of where our food comes from and yes. being close and connected to where our food comes from. Now, we know the state of our oceans yeah. is in despair. It's a... Uh, How does that yeah. maybe impact where it's a concern we, what and we it's should a, look for? It's a complicated subject. Okay. Now, what we would want to do, of course, is always steer towards companies that have the highest integrity in harvesting these things, okay. right? And making sure that they're getting them from the most pr- pristine sources possible. All right, so that's number one. Number two, we have to understand also that these plants have this really remarkable ability to buffer and protect themselves and your body from toxicity. And there's some research showing things like, you know, kelp can help to basically um, eliminate or help your body to detoxify radioactive isotopes. You know what I'm saying? So it's really important for us to understand this, that these are kind of, these things evolve uh, along with our current situation, you know, and kind of help us to to, to protect ourselves from, from what the craziness in our mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. So understand that it's really important, but also, of course, we don't want to go to, you know, uh, Charlie's seafood, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sea veggie plant. That's like at bikini bottom, sure. you know, with SpongeBob and all this re- weird radioactive stuff happening. Well, I know that going to maybe an international store or grocer that I may not be able to read the labels because they're in a language I don't yeah, know. You got to be careful like with that. that. You, you know? got to so be careful with that. There, right. Yeah. So just do your research. Mm-hmm. And generally, uh, some of the brands that are going to be found at places like, you know, Thrive Market and That's also, it, yeah. you know, Whole Foods and other pe- other places that tend to do their homework, not always the case, it's going to be a much more viable option. That's a great question. That makes too. sense. So, so I got one last thing on this. When we think, when we think about the the history of, you know, we've got yeah. thousands of years of, of wisdom and effectiveness of something from the ocean, right. but not all people are ocean-based people. You know, mm. some folks were in the middle of the continent or somewhere. in the mountains, you know, <laughs> how might yeah. that affect or matter? Yeah. Because, you know, what we're, what we're talking about today, one of the big things is eat local. Right. Right. So here's the deal, I'm though. From Denver, so. <laughs> <laughs> but are you really? You know, know, all of our ancestry can be traced back to. You know, you uh, have to be close to water. That's right. But also, we're today we're all really world citizens. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is is intermingling. You know, every single day. Um, you know, they're finding things. You know, like we talked earlier a little bit a little bit about radioactive materials, mm-hmm. but that's showing up. We talked about this in a past episode in heavy cream. You know, um, stuff from 40 years ago in another part of the world Mm -hmm. is showing up in your kale, Mm -hmm. right? So we're world citizens, we're world travelers, and not only should we, of course, focus on eating local to support that local agriculture and to get those nutrients as fresh as possible, but we also need to tap into those, quote, superfoods Mm -hmm. as that added layer of insurance and getting compounds that our bodies could really use facing the circumstances that we're all facing sure, today, sure. you know, to give us that little edge. So that's a fantastic question. Well, you really hit it home with the, you know, our ancestry. Essentially, we all had to be near water. Yeah. So yeah. this is why, like I said, up. and this is a, a true wild food still mm-hmm. as well. So love that. All right. So that's the Thank first you. category there. The four unusual foods that can help to transform your to body water. is number one is seaweeds. Mm-hmm. Number two on this list is gelatinous foods <laughs> that right? is unusual. gelatinous <laughs> foods so what does this look like well one of our favorites that we talked about multiple times on the show is aloe vera yeah right and so aloe vera is this remarkable plant that we tend to think about in lotion mm-hmm. you know i got the aloe vera lotion you know to get all smilky smooth right <laughs> smilky. <laughs> But aloe vera is also a very 
viable and nutritious form of food that can do a lot of great for your body. So some of the things that you're going to find in aloe vera, uh, number one, it's an excellent antioxidant that assists in the levels of vitamin C and vitamin E remaining balanced in your system. All right, so it helps for your body to utilize them and also to maintain normal levels of them because because of the stress that we're exposed to, a lot of these things can get siphoned and sucked out of our system very quickly. So it's kind of a defensive antioxidant. Uh, also, it's very rich in uh, sulfur-bearing compounds like MSM, mm -hmm. methylsulfonylmethane, which is really important for regenerating tissues. Um, also, and by the way, so they work synergistically together, uh, sulfur and vitamin C to help to regenerate tissues and create new tissues and cells. So skin health, really important for that. Obviously, we know aloe vera is supposed to be good for your skin. Mm -hmm. This is why it's good for your skin, but beauty is from the inside out. Say that. We have to remember yes, that, yes, right? Yes, So should we be eating aloe vera too? Of course. We'll talk about <laughs> so, but here's the thing, uh, Cleopatra, yeah. right? Storied for mm -hmm. her beauty, yes. aloe vera was her favorite plant, all right? She knew that it was giving her this uh, sexy edge, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, also it's very rich in polysaccharides. So poly means many, mm -hmm. saccharide means sugars. Like why would we want many sugars though? Mm -hmm. um, but so that really depends on the length of the chain of the sugars. The shorter the chain, the more sweet it is, the longer the chain gets, the more bitter it gets. So this is, it's a pretty bitter substance. And polysaccharides, so we talk about uh, essential fatty acids, right? We talk about essential amino acids, so essential proteins. What about the essential sugars? What about the other macronutrient group? We don't really hear much about that. We fired that. them. <laughs> right. <laughs> we said, so, you can't come in here. These essential, uh, <laughs> these essential <laughs> glyconutrients, right? These mm -hmm. sugar compounds are have been found to be very, very important for the healthy function of the human body. And so one of the things that's been discovered recently, I've talked about this a, a couple of times as well in past shows, is that uh, for many years, scientists thought that our cells are communicating via, of course, hormones are playing a big part, but the, the little pieces of the cell that talk to each other were amino acids. But once they were able to get strong enough microscopes, they could see that polysaccharides were they're kind of sprinkled throughout those amino acids and really doing the communication, the direct mm -hmm. communication. So polysaccharides are really important for the communication between all the cells in your body. Get right? Out. So polysaccharides also... It's time to invite them back. Aloe vera <laughs> assists in glutathione production, mm -hmm. which glutathione is this master antioxidant that makes every other antioxidant work better. So, so many great things there. Uh, so this is one of the gelatinous foods. So what you would do is fillet off the skin, kind of like um, you know the the skin off of a fish in a weird way, but you're filleting off the skin of the aloe vera, the green part that's kind of hard and mm -hmm. it's kind of sharp on the outsides. It looks like a dinosaur tail. <laughs> it does. You it know, does. if you want to think about the Flintstones, <laughs> right. Wilma, <laughs> right? And so it's a kind of strange looking plant, but it's very, it's very strong. It's very it has a lot of vitality and it could survive in very harsh conditions without a lot of water because it absorbs so much water from the environment. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and so it's again, very juicy. it's an adaptogen. You yeah. want to eat stuff that has a hard time being killed <laughs> right. because you are what you eat. Right. <laughs> right. You know? right. But, I want to be down with that. But you want to make sure that it's still alive though yeah. too. You know, yeah. like we don't want to eat like a Twinkie's hard to kill too. <laughs> you know, like we could throw darts at the it Twinkie all die. day. Some of the some die. of the uh, <laughs> gross little uh, cushy stuff might come out, yeah. but it's still it's it's gonna keep taking a pounding, like right? Like baby kids, <laughs> <laughs> you can smash it in that package. Hey, I know what I've done it. You lick the package. <laughs> do you remember chocodiles? I do. What? Yeah. <gasps> How could you resurrect them in that my was consciousness? The <laughs> <laughs> that was the hottest thing. First on of all, the, the name. Yeah, I think that's probably where my you know wordsmithing may have originated. Chocodile. <laughs> Seriously, there's some some connection Hostess, there. Hostess, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Chaka Dagum Dial. <laughs> but you <laughs> also remember that they've been playing manipulating our minds for a long time. Mm -hmm. Ding dong. Wicked, right? Calling you a ding right. dong. You uh. <laughs> you ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> That's ding a whole dongs, bunch of insults ho -hos. going yeah. on, right? Subliminal oh. messaging, right? How absurd. But. I never <laughs> just understand that, you know, 
this whole process of what we're looking at today is getting reconnected to what's real and natural and avoiding these fake foods. We want to eat more foods that have this vitality, that have this strength and this adaptability because, mm-hmm. again, we kind of pull on those traits and characteristics. So aloe vera is one of these. So what happens foods. after we fillet it? What do we do oh, with yeah, the so gel? Oh, yes, you fillet it out. The gel itself, you can, and we've done done this before, yeah, and, you know, know, live, doing class and stuff. Yeah, but we'll take that awesome. piece, mm-hmm. toss it into a smoothie. You know, if you're making whatever kind of fancy smoothie. And we've got some recipes for that as well. Uh, you can go to themodelhealthshow.com forward slash superfoods. All right, so themodelhealthshow.com forward slash superfoods, and you can get access to that recipe book if you haven't done so already. People <laughs> love the book. So um, so that's one is aloe vera. Another one is bone broth. And so bone broth, after a few hours in the refrigerator, the, bro- the broth will congeal into the consistency of jello. And there's a lot of collagen that's featured in the bone broth, uh, which is a protein matrix in our bones, tendons, and ligaments, and other flexible tissues in our body. And this gelatin that is within the bone broth has a lot of really interesting properties, and to the degree that some people are taking like gelatin supplements, which is kind of weird because gelatin is looked at as kind of a byproduct and sold very cheaply. You know, so it's funny how. When you get the whole food itself, the whole mm-hmm. substance making bone broth, you might get some interesting uh, benefits from that. And by the way, so the active ingredient, uh, this gelatin that's derived from these bones is from Jello dessert. It's it's used for Jello dessert, gummy bears, <laughs> right, and marshmallows. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these weird fluffy things um, that have been kind of mutated and turned into something weird. Um, it actually is derived from bones so right, please bone know broth. that we're not endorsing yeah i'm not saying to eat a gummy bear they're <laughs> gummy cute bear, right? they're cute but uh yeah. you gotta be careful with yeah, that stuff you do. Yeah, you do. all right now so, that's not soup bone broth is not it's, it's essentially it's a glory let's be real okay. it's a glorified soup <laughs> right but now I mean, it's it so, sounds sexy yeah it's bone it's broth <laughs> it's bone it's bone broth it's bone broth. <laughs> <laughs> so it and but it's not like Campbell's soup, you sure. know. It's not I mean, like just a vegetable soup. It's what Granny you're deriving, used to do all the time, right? You're extracting that collagen mm-hmm. and the marrow and all these other interesting compounds. You're not going to get unless you do this process. And so this is basically, you know, taking those bones, toss them into the cr- the slow cooker, aka the crock pot, mm-hmm. or you know, just boiling it over low heat for a long, long period of time with you know water and spices, things like that. But here's some other benefits: the amino acids, essential fatty acids. The glyconutrient slash polysaccharides are very rich in bone broth as well. So it's not your average soup, right? And also you're going to find um, rich source in, in minerals, trace minerals, so calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, things like that as well. And again, it has that gelatinous quality. And all of these things that we've talked about and the other ones we're going to mention have been shown to, this is so important in our world today because of the gut restoration capacity that it has to to heal your body from the inside out. And if we look at the doctrine of signatures we talked about many times, yeah. that the juiciness in between the vertebrae in your spine, you know, your your the disc in between your vertebrae, they should be cushy. Right. Right? But for a lot of us, myself included, That's you right know, on. over you know, 10 years, how long ago is this now? Yeah. So this was 16 years ago, diagnosed with incurable degenerative disc disease and seeing that completely reversed, I attribute a big part of that to upgrading my nutrition and getting in foods that have these nutrients that your disc need, they need those compounds. You know, it's like your body's trying to, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of scenario. If it doesn't have the raw materials to build them, how can it do the Mm -hmm. job? I can't. You know, especially. I mean, it'll it'll do whatever it can. Yes. But to keep you alive, what basically. it builds with, you know, a lot of us are walking around, or it could be right, the right. actual cement. A lot of us are walking around with internal life support happening, mm. and we don't even know it. That's powerful. And so once once we make the decision to get off of the life support to start freeing ourselves of that bondage and get these nutrients back into our system again, we essentially we get back online. Mm. You know, and your body knows what to do if it has the right conditions to do the job. We just oftentimes we need to get out of the way. You know, so that's what this is really about is having more of these kind of uh, resources to add to your superhero utility mm-hmm. belt. 
instead of just wearing some uh, some suspenders. Sure, sure. You know, so well, lo- <laughs> what comes to mind is when you yeah. you've seen a construction site. You know, they put up the fences first and they clear the area, but they have all the things there on site. They bring all the things that they need there to build, yeah. and kind of that is a, a way I visualize needing to work this out with my body. Work it out. Your body knows what to do. All right, so that that's another and it's one. Doing it. The bone broth. It's working. Another one is chia, right? <laughs> chia and flax. Chia is a complete protein, which is a really important and kind of unique thing in this category of foods, being a seed. What does that mean and exactly? A complete protein. It has all of the essential nine essential amino oh, acids. Right. Okay. All right, so these are amino acids your body cannot produce on its own um, through biological transmutation. And so these are needed for the building blocks of your cells. Flax as well is another gelatinous food. So when you add water to these, you basically create like this gel or even pudding. And flax has a little bit more protein by weight than chia does, but it's not a complete protein like chia is. Mm -hmm. And chia seeds and flax seeds are both rich in the omega-3 ALA. So that's alpha linolenic acid. And this was according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. One ounce of flax seed has about 4.7 grams of ALA, and one ounce of chia seeds has about 5 grams. Now, this is important because ALA gets converted into the omega-3 EPA and DHA. Those are the end products. Those are the most viable, usable um, forms of omega-3s for, you know, reducing inflammation, for uh, building our cell membranes. This is what our body really needs, and your body can convert some of that ALA from flax and chia into the, the stuff that we really need. That we need. And that you mm-hmm. can't find that really in the plant kingdom. And really to, to be straightforward with this, it's an arduous process for your body to do, to do that conversion and it's not very effective. So this is why we also want to make sure that we're getting other sources like we talked about uh, earlier, you know, with the bone broth, for right. example, right. which might be a viable option for some people, but it just depends on their approach to nutrition, you know, mm-hmm. with vegetarian or whatever whatever your uh, sure. belief system is. Sure, but so, you just can't blanket. I'm taking in protein or I'm getting in protein and feel it, figure that it's all the same. It's all just right. one level of it. And another interesting thing about the chia and flax seeds is their antioxidant content. And this is what enables these very, very tiny seeds to not go rancid when they're packed into uh, their, their containers, their packages and sitting on the store shelves for quite a long time. However, when they're taken out of their shell, you know, when the flaxseed is ground and that shell is cracked open, they can go rancid pretty quickly, especially when it's extracting the oil out. And this is why oftentimes you'll find these oils, you know, the, the flaxseed oil, for example, mm-hmm. in a refrigerated section and in a dark bottle at your neighborhood friendly local mm-hmm. health food mm-hmm. store. Right. And it's because they're, the antioxidant power is taken away when you just extract the oil. Mm-hmm. But the whole seed themselves, fantastic, right. rich source of antioxidants. Also, the fiber, (laughs) the fiber (laughs) content. This is what they're really known for as well. Um, Really great sources of of dietary fiber, which fiber is essentially non-digestible carbohydrate fraction of the plant. And so it really helps to kind of sweep through there. And But again, just like with everything, it depends on the person. Chia seeds can be fantastic fiber for some people. Mm -hmm. For other people, it might even cause a little irritation. You know, you've got to pay attention. But for the most part, they're going to be all good, Mm -hmm. especially chia. Uh, Flax seeds, same thing. So you just have to pay attention to your body. These can be incredibly helpful for restoring the health of the gut, the colon, and just your gastrointestinal tract, period. But again, you just got to pay attention to your body. So Any difference between the golden and the... Darkened, I mean, there's going like, to be, especially colors like that. That's such a great question. Colors are indication of the antioxidant content, right? So that's the what more antioxidants. Color, the more antioxidant, not or necessarily. The less color? It just depends. the The spectrum is different. Okay. You know, and it's going to indicate different types. Please understand. Even though we've found out a lot in food science and overall uh, health and biology, kinesiology, human anatomy, we still only know a fraction of a, fra- a fraction of what is really going on with humans, with our cells, and also what's in food. You. you know, so there's so many different things, but those colors are an indication of the antioxidant content, the different antioxidants that are present because there's a lot of different types yeah, of antioxidants okay. and the strength of those as well. And what we know is that the deeper, darker colors tend to be uh, have more antioxidants, mm-hmm. not necessarily better, right. but more. Right. So as we get into the 
dark brown purple mm -hmm. chocolate color right of cacao that that deep dark blue of blueberries, blueberries we know yeah. that those are richer in antioxidants dark colored you know like red wine is another mm -hmm. one that people say oh it's Get my antioxidants on, <laughs> sippy sip sip. <laughs> but you got to, you know. I think you've had a few too many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so there's there's this whole spectrum, and it's just, that's just an indication of that. Okay. And there's going to be some differences in the micronutrient content a little bit, but pretty much a flaxseed is a flaxseed. Sure, sure. Is a flaxseed. Well, we started getting whole flaxseeds because I, I didn't realize the science behind it, but the ones that had been ground or milled, they yeah. smelled after a while in yeah. those containers. Yeah. And uh, so I just switched because it just didn't feel right. Yeah. So the yeah. viable thing to do is to get it and ground it yourself mm -hmm. just with a little coffee grinder. That's what we do. And then we'll yeah. just keep it in the refrigerator, you know, uh, a little BPA free Ziploc bag or there something go, like that. <laughs> and just, you know, use it within mm -hmm. a week or so. But when it's taken out of its little safety container and then packaged up on the store shelf, for a while, I don't know. Right, you know, that's right. again because of the antioxidants have they're not as present anymore. You certainly can smell smell the difference. I yeah. noticed the difference right away. And just a little side note for those that are the preparers of food and things for their families and selves. The Nutribullet is great for grinding coffee beans fresh mm -hmm. and it also works great for flax. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. There's a blade. Yeah. For There's it. a blade for that. There's a blade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right. another one of these gelatinous <laughs> foods is okra. Yeah. Um, so okra. <laughs> some people love okra, I others are not a fan. And with okra. one of the things, especially if you if you if you cook them a certain way, I'm not talking about fried okra, <laughs> right? But if you cook them a certain way, you'll notice the gel, uh, the gelatinous mm. quality that comes from those. Actually, so, they're pretty good raw. If they're crispy, and you can just lots of ways different to, ways to take different your okra. preferences. Yes. And so. Studies show that okra helps to stabilize blood sugar. They're a rich source of minerals, uh, plus vitamin A and C. And there's a lot of different ways, like you just mentioned, that you can add them in. And so I'm just bringing in, a, in another from the vegetable kingdom that a lot of people might not think about, but it has some of those healing gut restorative properties as well. Well, then let me also ask then some things, some vegetables are release or give you more value by being somewhat cooked like broccoli mm. or yeah so cooking so broccoli for example okra, which this is not a show about this but yes. the, hey, the goitrogens prepare. that are in there you know the so what? a lot of people can have issues with their thyroid because of the the goitrogens that are found in these compounds in in broccoli for example goitrogen this can s kind of suppress okay. the function of your thyroid all right Ooh. but by cooking them it's going to eliminate most or all of those compounds. Okay. So eating the bra the raw cruciferous vegetables for people with thyroid issues might not be a good idea, even for people with a healthy thyroid because it might create some strain suppression. So it's not just like everything's better raw. Right. Let's do it. Right. There are a lot of great benefits to raw foods and to juicing and things like that. But again, we got to keep in mind how have humans been consuming it for, you know, rec in recent human history, mm -hmm. you know, and we've had the advent of fire for quite a long time, you know, and so cooking <laughs> certain things and what our ancestors found is that there are things like um, kind of secondary enzyme inhibitors and things like that. Things that can be uh, removed from things that are in the plants to protect the plant from overconsumption That's right. that can be removed from soaking them, from cooking them. Uh, just from processing them in a certain way, people know about the lycopene in tomatoes. You're not going to get as much unless it's basically cooked mm -hmm. or okay. you know really right you blend it up now mm -hmm. if you just cut and eat a piece of tomato you're not going to get as much okay but when it's processed when it's heated a little bit the lycopene content goes up that. and one last food in this category is the first category sea veggies okay all right so they get the same kind of gelatinous deal when you soak them as well all right and so uh, one of the things that i've done in the past is taken uh, like the arame or the wakame which are kind of noodly like sea veggies and soak them and they get kind of soft and then maybe add some kind of a cashew cheese or some kind of sauce to it and make it into, and also I'll mix it with, uh, I've done this before with kimchi and make it into this little interesting dish. That so is interesting. Just little, yeah, little, little stuff like that You'll that you can, that you can try out, but that. it gets more this gel like quality when they are exposed to water. All right. So how do you add these things in? 
you kind of covered a little bit here already. Uh, the bone broth, you can use that use that as a base for so many different things, you know, for cooking or just having it straight by itself. Uh, the aloe vera is great to add into uh, your smoothie, or you can make a, a lemonade out of that. And that's one of the recipes that we share. And so basically, you know, you throw that into your high-speed blender with, you know, juice a bunch of lemons or uh, maybe a lime or two can get mixed in there. And then your sweetener of choice and just kind of blend it all up. A little sea salt you're going to need to um, to bring out that extra sweetness and provide a few more minerals. And then you'll probably want to strain it just in case some of that pulp, if you don't want a thick lemonade, you know. And so you just strain it out and you're going to get a nice kind of superfood lemonade mm -hmm. with that. Uh, the chia and the flaxseed. Those are super simple. You know, you can ground flaxseed and sprinkle it on just about anything. Uh, the chia seeds, you you can get some benefit from those whole as well. So there's even like drinks that you can buy at the store that have chia seeds already in them. Making chia pudding, mm -hmm. you can ground these things up and add them to your baked baked goods as well. Mm -hmm. um, you could just sprinkle <clears throat> them on your um, smooth onion, I mean, like on your frozen acai and that kind of stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. And also um, smoothies, of course, yeah. is a super easy absolutely. thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, there's lots of different ways that you can add in the flax seeds and chia seeds. Again, baked goods. Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. Gluten-free pancakes, a little <laughs> flax seed in there. Might be delicious. I'm I'm just kind of putting it out there with a little uh, couple scoops of hemp, hemp force protein. Might be delicious. <laughs> really? I'm Do just put putting it, it out your, there. In your pancakes. Protein pancakes. Yeah. Shut Upgrade that up. nutrition. I love but that. We got to remember still, they're still pancakes. They right? are, whether so, they're rice or oats or whatever. It's, it's still a pancake, mm -hmm. but you can always upgrade. That's what we're about with the Mono Health Show. It's Absolutely. not restriction. Yeah. So, what can we add in yeah. to make it even better? I love that. Right? I'm adding more in than I was taking out previously. Yeah, it's funny. And the, the kind of negative stuff will automatically find its Move way out, the out way. of the picture, yeah. right? Like, oh, this yeah. is getting uncomfortable. Yeah. It's a tough crowd. No, <laughs> no respect. No respect. <laughs> All right, so that is number two on our list of these incredible four unusual foods that can help to transform your body. So number two is the gelatinous foods. Number three, and this one is something that I've had a tremendous amount of experience with uh, over the years, and this category of unusual foods is medicinal mushrooms. <laughs> the mushroom. Now, again, we're going to dive into the category because there's so many. Um, the, the big player here and my favorite, the one that I consume most frequently is chaga. Okay. It's chaga. That's C H A G A and chaga in, in our conversation about antioxidants, this is quite possibly the densest, highest antioxidant food that humans consume. All right. It is the bee's knees. So it's like 10 times more than chocolate, you know, and chocolate is amazing, oh, wow. you know, so Chaga is an incredible antioxidant, but there are some other important players. So if we dive in here and look a little bit deeper, in particular, superoxide dismutase. And this is a natural antioxidant enzyme that's produced within the body that plays a significant role in free radical scavenging. It's a very intelligent antioxidant. And what SOD does, so superoxide dismutase, aka SOD, what it does is essentially it's like a bodyguard that protects your DNA from damage. I think a Terminator. <laughs> I mean, it's a free radical scavenger, mm -hmm. so it's going to go seek it out. All is fantastic. Right. <laughs> I knew you would get that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also what it does is it helps to reduce the workload on your immune system as well. So uh, chaga is also very rich in these polysaccharides that we've been talking about. So improving the cellular communication. A study conducted by the Department of Medical Biology at the Institute of Agricultural Medicine in Lublin, Poland, concluded that the chaga fraction elicited anti-cancer effects, which were attributed to decreased tumor cell proliferation, motility, and induced morphological changes. Sounds crazy, I know, but what it means basically is that chaga is clinically proven to be a powerful anti-cancer compound. All right. It has so many different anti-cancer components within it. And this is what chaga of all the medicinal mushrooms, it might be the most densely studied, you know, especially over the last decade or so. Uh, it's the one that has the most kind of buzz about it in the medical community as well, because it actually is, again, it's clinically proven to be a really potent anti-cancer. And now 
with all of these things, how do you consume chaga? Because it's not something that is edible. You actually have to cook it down okay. and extract the goodies from it. And for myself, what I've been doing probably about the past three months now, maybe a little bit longer, on almost a daily basis, and I actually had it today, is this incredible chaga product from this company called Four Sigmatic. And what, why I love it is that it's dual extracted. And we actually talked about this when we mm -hmm. talked about chaga our in tea. the past. Yeah, our tea show. If you're just extracting it through hot water extract, which is the way a lot of people are doing, the hot water extraction pulls out the beta-glucans and other beneficial compounds for the immune system, which are fantastic. But it's missing out. It's almost a waste because of all of the compounds in there that are only able to be extracted through alcohol extraction. So the alcohol extraction is going to help to release the triterpenes and more of the adaptogenic compounds that have so much benefit for even your neurological function. You know, there's so many great things there that you're not going to get. In. These are more like anabolic compounds that are in chaga that you're not going to get unless they're extracted both ways. So they do a dual extraction and they make it so super simple because these are these little packets that are ground in such a way that you don't have to do any extra work because like when you're grinding coffee, right? You don't want those little grains. The same thing with the medicinal mushrooms. They could be a little bit grainy uh, when you're using them, you know, open up capsules or whatever and you gotta like b blend it into something to be able to consume it. These that like literally could just add hot water on top of them. And so I connected with these guys, reached out and asked, hey, can you guys Get, do something for my audience. Do you want to sponsor the show? Because I love, I absolutely love their products. Yeah, yeah. And my wife is actually a huge fan of another one I'll talk about in a minute. Okay. And so we've been having these every single day. And so what I'll do is I'll use, and they've got an excellent chaga. So it's the chaga mm -hmm. and I'll make a tea with it. So I'll use the chaga, I'll put that into the blender with some hot water, add a little bit. This morning I did a little ghee. Oh. OM ghee. Yeah. <laughs> and a little MCT oil, a couple of drops of English toffee stevia. Mm -hmm. I added a little bit of powdered shilajit in there as well and blended that bad boy up with some cinnamon. Fantastic. I see. It was the best yeah, day. Like a double ever starting, you double know, like as mushroom espresso there. Yeah, it was it was pretty <laughs> fantastic. But also traveling, you know, with the book tour and just being able to bring those with me and just add hot water to it. Very nice. Super simple mm -hmm. and and I love mm -hmm. it. So you guys can get a 10% discount Sweet. if you go to, and by the way, they said, okay, let's they do said, this. Yeah, <laughs> we're with it. Why so, not? So all you need to do is go to foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And we put that in the show notes as well at the modelhealthshow.com. But that address is F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash M-O-D-E-L. Got it. All right. Foursigmatic.com forward slash model. 10% off and you can use and I've actually got them right here Jade there's a handout she's like oh you brought me samples nice. if I bring anything to the studio with me That's mine. she's all over so here's my chaga mushroom elixir beautiful I love their packaging it's so it is cool nice. too yes, and it's it super is. simple so there's that force field in a cup and Chaga, that's hot. So this is how I, I get my reishi in super now hero. you know instead of I used to buy different supplements and have to open the capsules up and pour them into things but this makes it super easy for me. So oh, um, Chaga is one of the medicinal mushrooms people want to check out. Another one is Rishi. So yeah. Rishi is an incredibly effective immunomodulator. And it's another powerful anti-cancer substance. There's a study published in Pharmacological Reports that stated that compounds in Rishi effectively, quote, effectively inhibits cancer cell invasion in vitro and metastasis in vivo and thus it may act as a potential drug for treating cancer. So Rishi has been used for over 4,000 years in documented history versus the drug they're trying to create made last week. Like, yeah, tomorrow, you know. <laughs> tomorrow. So how, how, how long has your body, how long has your cells been accustomed mm -hmm. to these type of, mm -hmm. of medicines? And it's really important to understand too that same thing, very similar to chaga and the polysaccharides, the triterpenes, the antioxidants that are very similar to chaga, but what's so exceptional about reishi is its neuroprotective properties. There's research published in Neuropharmacology that show that reishi extract supports the production of nerve growth factor, which is a protein that's vital for the healthy neurological function and has also been found to have therapeutic effects on neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's and Huntington's disease. Again, clinically proven to be effective. So this is one of the big 
shout outs. You know, this is one of the ultimate shout outs to any of the different supplements that you can think of and how powerful reishi can be. Wow. Yeah. And also, we've talked about this multiple times on the show, it can lead to about a 300% increase in your NK cell activity. Mm -hmm. So that's your natural killer cells. So these are the immune weapons that are constructed to basically defend your body against anything you might be exposed to. And so for this, at Four Sigmatic, they sent us this hot chocolate mix that had the reishi in there that my wife absolutely loved. And these two are the, the kind of flagship things, in my opinion, the reishi and the chaga. But of course, they've got products with lion's mane, which has the nerve growth factor more so than any of these other medicinal mushrooms. Um, so it's great for your, uh, for your nervous system. You know, and just imagine again what our nervous system is exposed to today. And these mushrooms are adaptogens. And another one is cordyceps. Yeah. You know, uh, people who listen to the show know that I'm a big fan of cordyceps as well. Uh, Clinically proven to stabilize your blood sugar, to increase the oxygenation of your cells, improve athletic performance. Since I've been with my wife, she, I've never seen her drink coffee before, personally. You know, not that I think she was trying to not drink it or no, whatever. No, no, she actually, I mean, there's a story behind that with the way beans were stored and yeah. the, the Of course, the there's, a of, yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of weirdness out there. She does not do coffee. Yeah, well, she's <laughs> been a, a, a hot chocolate person. Okay. Right? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Shout out. All right. So, <laughs> but she tried the mushroom coffee from Four Sigmatic with the cordyceps and the chaga. Yeah. And I'm telling you, she she has it every day now, you know. And, and so, so these are okay to have every day. These, because it's medicinal mushrooms, mm-hmm. these are these are known as tonics. These are something that they actually improve as you use them more often versus a lot of other things, stimulants that can start to kind of wipe out your adrenal glands. And it's just enough coffee in here to give it a little buzz, but it's not too much. Mm-hmm. You know, the caffeine content is a little bit lower. So this one is, again, based on chaga and cordyceps. And it's really great for just kind of getting the day going. It's when we both have our our drinks. I have the chaga Mm -hmm. and she has the the, um, mushroom coffee mix. I love it. And also she did the hot chocolate as well. I'm not a big fan of the hot chocolate, whatever, okay. but okay. I did with the reishi product that they have. It's, it's really delicious. Well, and again, you go. can have it by itself or blend it with some essential fatty acids. You can blend it with coconut oil. I did that yesterday. I blend the chaga with uh, a tablespoon of coconut oil, a couple of drops of English toffee stevia, or maybe some vanilla cream stevia. Mm-hmm. And chaga actually has a compound in there that tastes sort of like vanilla by itself. Got it. But again, these are these are medicinal mushrooms, medicinal herbs, so they do taste a little bit mm-hmm. earthy. It's why you can you know blend them with some fats to cut some of the bitterness. Or some people can you know you can just, just drink it straight. It, right. take it Man, to, no, take it to the head. Yeah. <laughs> so these are fantastic. I'm products. excited so to try these. Foursigmatic.com forward slash model. You're going to get ten percent off, and you can also look at what our favorites are. We'll have that, those right there on the page. And these guys are really amazing. They care a lot about the process. They care about. Uh, the sourcing and just a really group, great group of people uh, who put these together. And that's why, you know, I I very rarely align myself with uh, any of these type of products. But if I was to do this process and create these medicinal mushroom products, this is what I would do. Oh. It's the way that they're doing it. And so foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And so this is number three on our list of our four unusual foods or category of foods that can deliver you lot, a lot of health and vitality. So, and by the way, here you go, Jay. Thank I see you. you keep grabbing for the box. I <laughs> have to. Well, one, I, I'm a coffee drinker, or at least I was. So I yeah. like this very much. Yeah. And of course, so what we do is we rotate things. Mm. By the way, a little side note here. That's what I was going to say. If it's caffeinated, you want to rotate. You know, you don't want to have that every day, every day, if it is a coffee even an excellent coffee like this. So what she'll typically do, she'll maybe have it five days of the week and then two days, you know, she'll do something else. Um, so it's, go- it's great to cycle everything, really, you mm-hmm. know. But again, the medicinal mushrooms themselves are known to tonify the body. They're, they're known as tonics in the Chinese medicinal system. These are things that they add on to their benefit as you use them more often. Sweet. All right, so good stuff. Absolutely love it. All right, so cordyceps, Maitake, shiitake, lion's mane, chaga, rishi, amazing things to look into if you're not already utilizing them in your health strategy to keep taking your health and wellness to the next level. So let's move on to number four on our list of these unusual foods that can deliver your body a lot of health and vitality. And number four is 
fermented foods. Oh, yeah. All right, the fermented foods. So kimchi is one of the big ones that's popping right now. A lot mm-hmm. of people are talking about kimchi. Kimchi. Kimchi is a red fermented cabbage dish, occasionally with radish, and it's mixed with salt. And so all of these fermented um, veggies there, you know, you, use, you create a brine, you know, with the salt and the water. Uh, vinegar, garlic, chili peppers, and other spices. So it's a little spicy. Yeah, it is. Kimchi is a little spicy. And it contains healthy bacteria, in particular, the lactobacilli that aids in the digestion processes of your body. Really important strain of bacteria you're going to find here. And also, what's so interesting about kimchi is that it's been found to protect your body against heavy metal toxicity. Professor Miri Kim of the Food Nutrition Program in Chungnam National University discovered that Chinese cabbage and radish found in kimchi contain biochemicals that are helpful in detoxifying heavy metals found in your liver, small intestine, and kidneys. Wow. Mm. Some of the other benefits seen with kimchi are improved digestive health, improved immune function, and safe enhancement of weight loss. All right, they help to regulate that appetite. All right, so... Kimchi is just one of them. Then we've got the sauerkraut. I like that. We've got kefirs. We've got pickles. Do you remember the pickles when we were kids, the hot pickle? Not hot pickle. Oh, you wouldn't do the hot? uh, All right, well, we'd do the hot. So you go to the corner (laughs) store, get some penny candy and a pickle. And a pickle. Little did I know I was getting the one thing, fermented thing in my life that was giving me some healthy bacteria and possibly keeping me alive. Maybe so. (laughs) But now, you know, it's just understanding there's so many different um, cultures around the world that utilize some form of fermented food in their system, right? And these are just different ones from different places uh, around the world. So the pickles, yogurts, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you can make vegan options, vegetarian options of these things as well by making coconut kefir, uh, Mm -hmm. coconut yogurt, things like that. And we've talked about that in the past on on different episodes. So the fermented foods are incredibly important for all of us to start adding in to make sure we're getting that healthy array of bacteria on a consistent basis. And I would recommend, I've I've got it a little bit good because I have my mother-in-law who makes the kimchi for us, you know, but I would definitely look into starting to make some of this stuff yourself, you know, getting that process of creating uh, the food that's gonna show up on your table that you're giving your family, you know, be it, uh, just starting a small garden. Uh, maybe you're fermenting some stuff. Uh, maybe you just got an aloe plant, right? Yeah. You can just go in every now and then. And the crazy thing about aloe is that it grows back. Yeah, it does. Right? And, and, and that has to right. speak volumes, you know. Right. The Study regenerative po- uh, possibilities there is That's just right. truly remarkable. Mm-hmm. So the fermented foods is another important category. And there's so many different ways. Now, those ways. are okay for daily too, huh? Well, just like with everything, I would rotate them. You know, okay. and have different things at different times. You know, rotate it among the four unusual foods, or f- rotate. We it could. Among you the can. Types you can rotate fermented. and have different types of fermented foods for sure. But what I, I'll just say, share what I tend to do. There I tend to, go. I tend to use one fermented food for a stretch of time. You know, so maybe I might have kimchi for, you know, um, a week or two, and then I just won't have kimchi for probably an, a month or two, or mm-hmm. maybe even longer. Just uh, right now, I've been doing the yogurt, you know, making the yogurts and having that, and so I might have that two times a week, okay. you know. So there are so many different possibilities here, but it's really important for us to really take on that. Each culture, long lived culture, has some form of fermented food. If you look at the blue zones and the people who live in Okinawa, for example, you know, and they've got the fermented, the kimchi, you know, this is, you're going to have the fermented cabbage type dishes there. And it's a staple in their diet. And they're going to have this on a pretty consistent basis, mm-hmm. not necessarily daily, but pretty close. And maybe not large amounts, maybe just a little bit on the and side. And then there's going to be, there's fermented soy as well, which, you know, we get into that conversation of soy could be a little tricky. <laughs> if it's fermented, we're getting a change in the compounds that are there, like those goitrogens we talked about earlier. You know, you can help to buffer your body from those type of compounds and also, you know, the phylates, the things that can be potentially damaging to your system are going to get pushed out mm-hmm. through the fermentation process. But again, they weren't consuming soy dogs. <laughs> They're not consuming... You know, soy milk lattes every day in Okinawa. Tofurky. You know, right. They're not mm-hmm. getting up in the morning doing some Tai Chi than having tofurky sandwich. All right. This is a, it's more of a condiment, you know. So 
Uh, we're talking about miso, right? Miso mm-hmm. soup. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So another fermented option there. And there's tons more, so many, but we need to open that door up and start to at least eat the ones that you will eat, right? Because right. the fermented food category was a little bit dicey for me in the beginning. Being a kid who didn't like vegetables in the first mm-hmm. place, and now we're going to eat like some kind of tart or, or right. sour different um, foods. Whoa, like let's slow down a little bit. But now I absolutely love them. I love sauerkraut. I love kimchi. And I, I appreciate the different flavors. And you can do so many different things with them. You know, adding a little bit of dill mm-hmm. to the sauerkraut, for example. You know, just these really interesting small things that you could do to make it taste uh, even more desirable, you know. So there's a lot to do, a lot of these different things we can add in. A lot of fun to play with. These four categories of foods, today's really call to action to start adding them in if you're not doing that already. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're getting your sea veggies in on a consistent basis. Make sure that you're getting your gelatinous foods in on a consistent basis. Making sure that you're getting your medicinal mushrooms in, especially this category on a consistent basis with the world and environment that we're living in today and getting in our fermented foods on a consistent basis. And I hope that you guys got a lot of value out of this episode today. Uh, Make sure to head over to foursigmatic.com forward slash model for your 10% off of these amazing uh, medicinal mushroom uh, instant drinks. All right. The mushroom coffee is my wife's favorite and the chaga is my favorite and i see jade over there she's confiscated my one. boxes yes. that i brought in yes um, but they're fantastic and i really do appreciate those guys and i appreciate you guys so much for being a part of this mission with me we've got some incredible shows coming up this year and i i, I want to spill the beans now and tell you about some of the guests we've got coming up but it's going to be it's going to be game changing year for sure. Stay with us. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and also, I will be going to some additional cities here for the uh, next leg of the book tour. So, stay posted to the show, stay posted to the social media, and I'll let you guys know where I'm going to be so we can hook up face to face and we could chat. I've been doing Q and A's in every city that we've gone to. And it's just been phenomenal. Oh my, you should have seen New York City. It was crazy. We took over the store and oh, shout yeah. out to everybody who came out to see me. and. San Diego and LA and in NYC. It was truly a gift. And I'll definitely be talking about about that more as we go on here. So I appreciate you guys so much for being a part of this mission with us to up-level the health and well-being of our society. And it starts with us making this a part of our lives. Take care, have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.